Yeah, this. What did the Beatles think of Queen? As you all know, I'm a Beatles fanatic. So it'll be interesting to hear what who were my probably first ever musical heroes was the Beatles. I wanted to be a Beatle when I was for five, four, five. Um so it'd be interesting to hear what they have to say about Queen who have become a kind of newer fascination I guess so yeah let's see what I have to say let's go what did the Beatles think of Queen Queen and the Beatles are undoubtedly two of the most legendary bands of all time I will guess That they, I would guess that they actually liked Queen, all of them to be fair, because I saw a John Lennon thing where he was talking about the Sex Pistols, and he says, oh no, when someone, he said, if you heard the Sex Pistols, what do you think? And he's like, oh, it's funny you should say that. He said, um, someone gave me their tape like a year ago, he said, but I was listening to what I was listening to, he said, so I didn't really pay much attention to it, and then... Then I was kind of like, oh yeah, what was that band you was on about? And he said, and then they, I said, do me the tape again. And he said, and he said, yeah, they're good. And I was kind of like happy he said that, that he wasn't bitter about younger bands or jealous of younger bands. So I'm going to guess that they liked Queen. Unless, the only way I'll say that one of them said a bad word about him would be Paul in his later years. But I doubt it. Looking back, the peak of Beatles mania had passed just as Queen was starting out. So Queen took the torch and transformed popular rock music and reshaped the landscape of music history. Queen was always super unique, marching to the beat of their own drum, but together, both of these UK titans influenced each other strange ways over the years. In fact, the Beatles even looked up to Queen. Let's hear what the Beatles think of Queen. After John Lennon died, Paul McCartney became the de facto voice of the Beatles. So, what did this masterful vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, and songwriter think about Queen? The Freddie Mercury Club fan page on Instagram revealed an amazing interview with Paul McCartney, where he revealed his thoughts about Queen and Freddie, saying, Freddie always had a good voice. That's always been the anchor of that group, I think. And Brian, a good guitar player as well. You know they've had musical skill. I think you can tell when the band's got musical skill. But I think there's a say, the first thing you heard with Queen was Freddie's voice. And it's the same as it was then. It's a very, very true. You can tell that this band just, they are skillful musicians, all of them. That is very true. Very strong voice, a very distinctive voice. And you recognize that this guy knows what he's doing. Mm. Paul's thoughts give us fans amazing insight into the he knows what he's doing and he's comfortable doing it like he was meant to be doing it. That's what you get from Freddie Mercury. Admiration and inspiration cheered between the greatest rock legends of all time. But the camaraderie between these bands goes much deeper. Freddie himself valued one of the Beatles' thoughts more than almost anyone else in the music world. And yet, he was the one taken from this world too soon. Even though John didn't give his thoughts on Queen, Freddie and the crew gave their thoughts on John Lennon multiple times over Queen's career. It might surprise you to learn that John Lennon was Freddie's hero. Mm. Queen even covered Lennon's song Imagine. Oh, oh I'm going to listen to that. But it doesn't surprise me to hear that he was a, John Lennon was a hero of Freddie Mercury's. Because you hear it in his writing. That's why I'm always saying, oh, that sounded like Lennon. That sounded, and it's not the whole song. It's, it's, it's the little things that you know he's a real Lennon fan. It's the little way he phrases things sometimes, or maybe the way he does a melody. And it's not the whole song. It's just little bits that just shines the, the, the Lennon, that Lennon was one of his early people he imitated almost. like, And along the way, he's gathered more, but he's got that Lennon thing. 
live at Wembley in London on December 9, 1980, the day after John died. Oh, Freddie and company continued to play Imagine Lennon's song Imagine live at Wembley in London on December 9, 1980, the day after John died. Freddie and company continued to play Imagine as a tribute to John for their next few years. Queen even wrote a tribute to Lennon called Life is Real, song for Lennon, on their album Hot Space that came out in 1982. The song is cleverly inspired by John's writing style with a light piano to start off the track that sounds like Starting Over or Beautiful Boy. The title is most likely a follow-up reference of two verses from two different John Lennon songs. The line, Nothing is Real from Strawberry Fields and Love is Real from the song simply called Love. Hot Space also featured the song Put Out the Fire, which... I spotted that straight from the title. Cause love is real, real is love. Whereas his one was life is real. As soon as I saw that and knew it was a John Lennon tribute, I was like, it has to be. Um, and that's probably the best Lennon album out of all of them. I recommend listening to that album, The Plastic Yoko Ono Band, John Lennon and The Plastic Yoko Ono Band. It's, I think he was about 40 when he wrote it. Nah, it must have been, I don't know. Oh, where did he die at? I think he was 40 when he died. Maybe 42. Anyway, listen to that album. The John Lennon and the Plastic Yoko Ono Band. It's honestly the musical sound of a man having a breakdown. And it's the greatest album ever made. You just feel his pain in that album from losing his mum and his dad not being around and um, him becoming disillusioned with fame and the world and everything around him and him just losing interest and it's just a great album. I recommend that album. Also references John's death with the lines, they called him a hero in the land of the free, but he wouldn't shake my hand, boy. He disappointed me, so I got my handgun and I blew him away. That critter was a bad guy and I had to make him pay. Freddie also opened up about his thoughts. That sounds like, um, yeah, he's, that's wrote about What's it, Mark Chapman, who killed Lennon? Even though Lennon did sign him a picture, he waited outside for Lennon in the morning and asked if Lennon could sign an autograph for him. And Lennon stopped and did and had a chat with him. Then he went and recorded for a day and when he came back, he was still there and he shot him. So he did actually shake his hand and he did sign him an autograph. It's on the Beatles star, though he was hesitant to be compared to the man he called the greatest. Freddie said, I would never like to put myself on any sort of parallel with John Lennon at all, because he was just the greatest, as far as I'm concerned. It's not a matter of less talent or more talent. It's just that certain people are more capable of doing certain things than somebody else. And I just feel that I'm not equipped to do certain things that John Lennon did. And I don't think that anybody should because John Lennon was unique and a one-off, and that's how it is. I admire John Lennon very much. And in the book, Freddie Mercury, A Life in His Own Words, the phenomenal game-changing vocalist himself said, John Lennon was larger than life and an absolute genius. Even at a very early stage when they were the Beatles, I always preferred John Lennon's things. Me too. That's some incredibly high praise from one of- Me too, Freddie. Me and Freddie would have a good chat about Lennon because I completely agree. And when they went solo, the only solo stuff I like is Lennon because it has Lennon's sound and just Lennon's, whatever Lennon had, he just, he just, he just had it. And uh, yeah, I completely agree with Freddie, 100% undoubtedly one of the best vocalists, performers, and music icons of all time. John Lennon was sadly never photographed with any of the members of Queen, and worse than that, it seems like John never even met Queen in person or on the phone. While John had a growing rift with his own band,
he wasn't feuding with Queen at all. It was mostly just timing. By the time Queen was taking off in popularity, John had moved to the US to take care of his son, Sean, and subsequently laid low from the public, a move the introverted Brian May would later follow. Freddie wasn't the only one who loved the Beatles. Brian May was also a huge fan of George Harrison. That might come as a surprise, since George isn't known for wicked solos, but he's known as the guitarist for guitarists. His technical ability and nuance is widely appreciated by shredders and jazz guitarists alike. In a tweet, Brian said his favorite Harrison song was My Guitar Gently Weeps, because it takes courage to be gentle. Clearly a sentiment echoed in Queen's own music with their operatic style shifting from grandiose and loud to subdued and soft. In 1992, George and Brian May met up at a charity event at the Water Rats Ball. While the Beatles had lots of thoughts to share about Queen, this time Brian May gave his thoughts on the masterful Beatles guitarist, saying, I've been thinking about George a lot recently, and I really wish him well. And just before you came, I was thinking about how the press treated Freddie when he was ill. You know, he literally couldn't step outside his door for photographers. They were even trying to get in the windows, and there's absolutely nothing you can do. You have no protection. Later, May said, but I've only met George once. We played together at a Water Rats do, when Bert Whedon was King Rat. There was George, Joe Brown, Bert, and me. What a precious moment. I had a blinding migraine, but the moment overcame the pain. I wish I'd had the balls to say what I really wanted to at the time. I told George in such reverence, and I think he's so underrated by the guitar community. Everyone raves about people who play fast, but if you look at the catalog of stuff he's produced, it's colossal. In the photo, George was playing a Brian May Red Special signature guitar, and it might have even been May's original on loan for the gig. This was the first and only time the two met since George passed away in the early 2000s. The two legendary bands had deep admiration for each other and even took musical cues in style and lyrics. But Brian May said Queen was able to do one thing that the Beatles couldn't. While the Beatles split up, Queen held strong together. Life in the music biz wasn't always smooth sailing for Queen. They would frequently fight, but May said their disagreements made the band stronger and helped their creative process. While the Beatles split up, Queen came together like a real family. May had this to say about Queen's incredible success and amazing music with long days, hammering out new pieces of action and interaction between us, the performers, and the massive and highly sophisticated beast which is our touring rig. Sound, lights, staging, moving parts, video content, magic tricks, monitoring costumes, and music. I was pondering today that it's such a shame that the wonderful Beatles never got the chance to indulge themselves and their fans in such a fantasy. Touring life became uncontrollable for them after only a few years of massive fame. For us, we've had 40 years or more to develop and continuously innovate, and the technical and artistic team we have around us is at the very top level. Hearing Queen and the Beatles share their thoughts about each other gives us all rare insight into the inspiration behind two of rock's greatest bands. What do you think? I'll say one thing about that last thing. That, that That's true. I said in, in a video I just did about something to do with the Beatles. But, um, that the Beatles have said it got to a point where they couldn't perform live and that they all played out of tune one night and no one noticed because all their their gigs was just girls turning up and screaming at them and so that you couldn't hear the music the band couldn't hear what i was doing the audience couldn't hear what you're doing it was just deafening scream so it was pointless so but then i think what that was good for was the Beatles decided not to tour and just make music and then that made them start to make more creative music that at that point you wouldn't have been able to put onto a stage there wasn't the equipment to do that um, so yeah they have a right They're, Brian May's right about that the, the 70s, 80s all the technology because I'm sure it says in the anthologies that when the 
Beatles got signed, the record company the Beatles got signed to, when the Beatles got signed and the Rolling Stones got signed, the record company part of that business was the smallest part of the business. These companies were like, sold things to militaries or like had other things, whereas the record company was kind of just to pay the bills. It was just something that was a nice steady income. But then obviously the Beatles and the Stones and all of them bands just blew up and the money that came from it, that's after that, you got the more investment into music and, and the better equipment and, and things like that. You've got to think like it was the Beatles, the first time feedback was ever heard on a song was John Lennon. Um, it was the and they did that because one of them lent the guitar up and the string vibrated and then it went bang and I was like let's, let's use that so it's right I think the Beatles not touring he's right he's right about the, the Queen the one thing the Beatles didn't do that Queen did was the stage performance there's no doubt the Queen and Freddie was a better stage performer than them no doubt but I do think the Beatles having that decision of we're not going to tour no more, we're just going to make music, put their brain in an alternative way of writing songs, which had a big effect on, I think, the whole world at that point and onwards. Without that, I don't think you would have got the sort of more psychedelic, well, you definitely wouldn't have got the psychedelic because, yeah. But yeah, anyway, that was good. And I love that Freddie loves John Lennon, because I love John Lennon. And John Lennon's my favourite Beatle, always was. And I, I totally agree. He's a genius. And I know what Freddie's saying. That all right, I'm Freddie Mercury, but he's John Lennon. And there's just something about that man. That he, everything he touches, it like, imagine, if you listen to the, imagine how simple... The words are to imagine, the chords are to... It's so simple. that, And it's just... One of the most... Beautiful, poignant songs ever made. And it's just so... Simple. But... Yeah. So that's... That's made me love Freddie even more now. Now I know he's a John Lennon fan. Like a big job. But then I knew that anyway. I did know that. But then hearing him actually in his own words. Put across his thoughts of John Lennon was good. Because I like that. And I agree. I agree 100% with everything Freddie said. The man. John Lennon was a genius. No matter what you might want to say about. His. Personality or whatever. He's a genius. Anyway. Yeah. That's the reaction. Sweet.